is up everyone in a ripple and xrp community good morning happy sunday it's april 23rd we are days away possibly a week away from the lawsuit coming to an end wait till you see the article i got pulled up because listen the, the legal experts they're predicting it and they're predicting the price explosion you love to hear it you love to see it fact of the matter is this thing can come to an end any day now Listen, we saw we saw Judge Torres. We saw her schedule. She got some new cases added to his schedule. What does that say? What does that mean? It's simple. Something must be clearing up on her schedule if they're adding more to her schedule. That's how the world works. Think about it. Think about your schedule. You get booked out. Say you're a project manager. They throw a bunch of projects on your little calendar. Like, listen, you got to do project A, B, and C. As you clear one off, what happens? They throw another project onto your calendar. It's the same thing. This is how it works with judges. They clear up a case, they move on, they get assigned another case. Uh, folks, it's coming to an end. And what does that mean? It means price explosion. Yes, yes it does, folks. I can't wait, you can't wait, no one can wait. And as we look at live coin watch, XRP is the only coin on the alley that's in the freaking green. Well, BNB is a little bit, but XRP leading the charge again. We held 44 cents like we needed to do. 49 cents is the next price point we want to observe and look at and remember if you didn't look at last night's video folks the final wake up line life changing moves are on the way for xrp holders i put the video out last night late last night it was in the first intimation of the rangers game i think it was probably like 8 30 8 45 even nine o'clock i put that video out and i put a i put a very special message in that video towards the end because someone on Twitter was like, hey, Rep, listen, you really believe this thing can get up to over $100? Then they tried to use, like, the whole market cap thing. I broke it down. I explained to them each and every single point. I think you should go listen to that video. If you don't want to listen to the whole thing, don't. Fast forward to the end. Start about nine minutes. It's about a two-minute spiel. I really explained it very well. Bitcoin, $27,816. It's currently at 1.62% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum, $1,891. It is up 1.73% in the past 24 hours. Total cryptocurrency market cap, $1.2 trillion. As the Bitcoin dominance is coming in at 44.84%. Now, I already touched on this. The video from yesterday, very important message. Give it a watch. Give it a listen. Tim. Tim then tweeted out this article. Let's give my man a little retweet and like action over here. Make sure you follow Tim. He's always putting out phenomenal information, folks. He gets this article from Crypto News Flash and says, Ripple versus the SEC case ruling. It's an idiot. According to legal experts, will we see a ruling next week and will the XRP price explode? Great questions. Here's the article. It says, experts expect Judge Torres to make the ruling by the end of April. XRP community attorney John Deaton believes that the judge is taking her time to analyze each word before issuing the ruling. It states that two years ago, we know about the lawsuit, la di da di da John Deaton says, uh, the decision is big. The decision is as big as the decision the judge will ever be faced with. Think about what other decision is as big as this decision when it comes to a global trade and finance in modern history. This is the most significant non-fraud SEC enforcement action since 1946. And then it goes on to state in here, there have been times where she did summary judgment rulings at the same time as the Dubrat motions. Then there was another case where she did the Dubrat ruling and two weeks went and then she gave the decision on summary judgment. And then there was a case where she did the Dubrat ruling and a 60 days in between. Ashley Prosper, an XRP community member, observed that April 27th would be the 52nd day where Judge Torres ruled on the Dubrat motions. Based on the calculations, it took 52 days for the judge to decide that the brought motions in a case of a judgment summary ruling would be made any moment from now. You heard that, folks. You heard that. Coming weeks. Pay attention. A lot of these judges use the same, uh, you know, the, the same time frames that they did with other cases. As you can see, previous cases she had. She did the Debrat motions. She came out of ruling. Another time she did the motions. She waited like a month or two. She came out with the rulings. You see the same cycle. They have the pattern they like to do things in. Pay attention. I know I will be. Tim, to put this out. CTO David Schwartz clarifies XRP pre-funding strategy, which aimed a big heated debate on Twitter. In response to a thread regarding Ripple's Nostra Bostro accounts and pre-funding, Schwartz explained that instead of pre-funding in every market, 
Customers can pre-fund in just one account and make payments to any on-demand liquidity destination market. Schwartz also highlighted the flexibility of Ripple system, stating that customers can hold their funds in the preferred asset and pay in a different one. He emphasized the difference between parking USD to make the USD to Mexican payment versus pre-funding Mexican peso to make the USD to Mexican payments. This flexibility allows customers to have more control over their funds and reduce the need for multiple pre-funded accounts. Regarding the line of credit options, Swartz confirmed that Ripple can pre-fund accounts using their own XRP at very, at pretty much near zero cost. However, the company does take on some credit risk and much charge for this accordingly. So what they're doing, it's awesome. Listen, zero risk for the customer. They can move money around to different on-demand liquidity payment corridors. They don't need to pre-fund all, because like if they pre-funded all their accounts, it's pretty much like Nostra Vostra accounts, right? Like I pre-fund the Mexican corridor. I got to pre-fund the German corridor, the Euro, the Japanese, the Chinese. Why? Why do you need to? XRP is XRP. Why are you pre-funding all the accounts? So what they do is they pre-fund one account, which all of the other corridors that they're connected into, it ties into that one account and it pulls from it when it needs to. It's freaking genius. All you got to do is I one account now instead of keeping an eye on 80 accounts to make sure that there's enough money in all these accounts so cross-border money can be moved and on-demand liquidity can be funded because if it's not there, your transaction's going to fail because you don't have enough money to pay the gas fees as they put it in quotes. Crypto already put out this clip. Two clips for John Dean because John Dean was looking for any videos about Gary Gensler discussing algo in a positive way. Listen up. Vitalik Buterian talked about a trilemma and said it's hard to get all three of these, to get security, decentralization, and scalability. So Buterin is the innovator at 19 of the Ethereum network. He's now 25, maybe. But Vitalik Buterin said, look, you can get decentralization like in Bitcoin and security. It's reasonably secure, but it's not scalable. You maybe can get towards scalability, but you're probably going to tend towards more centralization. Now, one of MIT's uh, award-winning computer scientists, Silvio McCallie, says, no, he disagreed. He says, you can actually solve for this. Uh, Silvio uh, won the Turing Award. He's uh, sort of the father, uh, considered the father of something called zero knowledge proofs, and said, no, you can solve for this. And Silvio actually took a leave, a sabbatical and leave to create a cryptocurrency and a company around Algorand. And I'm not, I'm not sort of marketing for him, but I'm just, I'm just commenting, there's this debate. Can you solve basically what Satoshi Nakamoto wanted, decentralization in a scalable way and have it be secure? Interesting. He's not marketing for them. If you weren't marketing for them, why do you feel the need to state that you weren't? It seems to me like you are marketed for them. And you were just talking very highly and very positively on Algo, Gary. You want to know the conclusion I have come to, folks? I'm going to tell you the conclusion I've come to. I want to know what you think about this. There's a reason Gary isn't going after Ethereum. Gary owns Ethereum. Gary is one of those 40 to 50,000 people that bought in on the ICO. We showed you a document yesterday where Gary Gensler acknowledged, when he was working at MIT, acknowledged the ICO that Ethereum had, even told you how many people were involved in the ICO. Okay? What's the, what's, why isn't he telling you right now that Ethereum is a security if he's already publicly stated that they had an ICO? If he believed that they weren't a security anymore, he could have came out and simply nipped this whole thing in the butt because he keeps getting grilled on it by Congress. He could have nipped this whole thing in the butt and he could have been like, listen, yes, Ethereum, when it first came out, 100% was a security, but I wasn't in the SEC at the time. So I didn't label it a security, but I believe at the current date that they have done enough to become decentralized that it's no longer security. Bada bing, bada boom, conversation is over. But he yet, he is yet to do that. The question is to why, right? I am a firm believer that Gary owns a bunch of Ethereum. 
and he is protecting his investment and that he is protecting his boys on the back end and their investments. We know Gary is deeply tied up into that banking sector and the banking connections. We know he's tied to Goldman. Who is he protecting and why is he protecting them? I think that's the biggest question here. But I bet you anything, Gary is one of those Ethereum whales and he is protecting his own wallet, folks. And he's protecting the ones around him that he has made a deal to protect. I'm going to leave it like that. Listen, wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to each other. Ripple Family Cult is out.